Alrighty, welcome to a four on four draft. It's a cube draft. You've got myself, Troll Ascetic, Mac, and Luis Salvato. Whew, that's kind of the dream team right there. Got a great squad. We are battling against Jesse, Sandy Dog, Theo, and Dan the Man. So we've got some good opponents. We've got some great teammates. And we've got a pretty solid pack. I'm passing to the dog himself. There's Pest Infestation, Mike Seeger's favorite card, by the way, Archon of Cruelty, and Minsk and Boo. And I think pick one, pack one. I'm in the Minsk and Boo camp here. Minsk and Boo is really strong. It, uh, it's fairly easy to splash, though it is a two-colored card. Sandy would certainly take it. Archon's a little narrower. Pest Infestation's a little less powerful than either of these options. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Minsk and Boo. And there's also, like, an Underground Sea, a Pyrokinesis. Some other stuff, but Minsk and Boo, pick one, pack one, is it? <laughs> All right, we're going to have uh, the Planeswalkers are us today. And, oh, well, maybe. There's also a Fury. I did add this one recently to the cube. This is uh, my cube. I'm trying stuff out. Rotating, constantly iteration. So, uh, this is Galadriel's Dismissal. It's one white mana instant. Dark creature phases out. So it basically stops a removal spell, could remove a blocker, that sort of thing. But for four mana, for three, a kicker of three, so four total, you can phase out all of target player's creatures, so you can phase out all your creatures in front of a wrath or all theirs and attack them. So after first picking Minsk and Boo, it's definitely Fury or Comet. I think it's just going to be Fury. Fury is just incredible, and why go into another color? Sandy will just take the Comet, but that's not going to go that well with whatever he picked out of that pack. So if you took Archon or Pest Infestation, Comet is not very close in terms of uh, playables to those. And this passes to Mac uh, Urza, I think most likely as well as a brain freeze guys crit all that but yeah fury is my pickup here and i want to say i probably should just take bone crusher i mean i really do like sacred foundry and volcanic just red duels are great when you have two fantastic red cards especially when one of those is a pretty splashable one minsk and boo but bone crusher is quite strong i could take sacred foundry to mess with sandy but Bone Crusher is still really good, and I think Bone Crusher fits excellently into my strategy here. So let's just do that. Now, now I could mess with Sandy in a more legitimate way, which is just take Figure of Destiny and either splash Minsk and Boo, or go near Mono Red and you know splash both, or or just play like Mono Red splash Green Figure is fine there too. Could go Red White Green, whatever. The other option would be to take like Dress Down as a strong card. Gigantha I can't really play with as a companion because of fury once upon a time is the best green card in the pack but that's not strong enough to take here i don't think i actually like maze of ith with yavamaya if you have that combo this tapping for mana is good and it's a, it's a pretty strong card at defending your own planeswalkers but i don't think i should take it in my deck i think i am going to take the figure of destiny and then next up probably reckless storm seeker this is a pretty good red aggro card a lot of white cards in the pack but i don't really care whether i pass a hero and a Cathar Commando and a Sarah Paragon. That is just fine. Not taking Rafine's Tower, Eagles of the North. Yeah, let's just take Rust of Stormseeker. And if I get a, a reason to move off of Heavy Red or move off of just being red, I will. But so far, I really haven't found that. There's an Echo of Eons here, but that's not the end all be all, especially with all the cards I have here. So I like where I'm at. You could also treat Bone Crusher kind of as a, as a spell. It, it does both, which is why it's nice. But this looks like a very solid start. Two really, really strong cards, like two very high tier cards. And then Bone Crusher and Figure are both, I would call, and kind of in the premium range, though. They're, figure's committal enough that I don't love taking it super early. But given where I'm at, it feels like red is fairly open. And I think I'd probably hook Sandy into red-white, so I don't mind being here. All right. Oh, Strict Proctor. I want to talk about this one. I have a small package in here, which is Strict Proctor, Tails and Stifle to go with Lotus Field or Frexian Dreadnought. That Altar of Dementia you saw where you sack to mill equal to a creature's powers also go to the Dreadnoughts. One mana mill 12, so if you can do it twice, usually win. Here, it's Thalia versus Flame Slash. I'm just going to take Flame Slash. I'm also drafting a deck that's very good against Thalia, so I actually don't mind as much passing it. And, uh, you know, if Sandy wants that, that's fine. Here, there's two good white cards. There's Oust and Boromir. I could just take Inferno Titan. I've kind of res gotten to respect Big Red. Name Sticker Goblin, uh, Seeding Song. Those are the kind of cards that are good in this sort of deck. I don't mind passing two decent white cards. I don't really see a reason to go into white here. And then there's Third Path Iconoclast, but I'm not super into that. Oh, I do like Lava Dart. Oh, Slip Out the Back. Another combo with Frexian Dreadnought. You phase it out and it comes back with a 13-13 Trample. Pretty nice. There's Revoker. There's Lava Dart. And there's Mutagenic Growth as cards I'd be interested in playing. 
Mutagenic growth can be pretty sick, but I kind of feel like I should just take Revoker here. Oh, and there's the name sticker Goblin at Wield. So good. This is the perfect card for this deck. Three mana, two, two, adds four, five, or six mana. And uh, if we're lucky, we get to accelerate out something gigantic here. All red cards plus a Minsk and Boo with figure still just being a red card, but obviously rewarding you a little more for going into white as opposed to any other color. But who needs Lance if you're mono red? I mean, this actually... This actually looks like a really good start. The one thing that the, this deck is soft against is it doesn't have much disruption that isn't in the form of creature removal, but it makes up for that by being really fast, right? Figure into Revoker into Stormseeker. So that's kind of red strategy. Usually it struggles against white decks because, or even green decks, because it's not quite fast enough and they have good board presence. But having Fury, Flame Slash, Minsk and Boo, Bone Crusher, I actually feel pretty good about that. And the Inferno Titan plan is really good in the fair matchups, whereas to beat the unfair matchups, you're leaning on more on cards like Reckless Stormseeker and Figure of Destiny. But I don't consider myself mono red right now. First of all, I'm going to play a little bit of green for Minsk and Boo. But also, if I see another color, I don't have a, anything stopping me from maybe dabbling in it. But we'll have to see what the rest of the packs look like. So there's Zerda, but Zerda is not a card I'm going to play. Lotus Petal is good with Minsk and Boo. There's Badlands, which is a fantastic card because it's a duel, but I actually think this is Lotus Petal time. All right, now there's Decadent Dragon, but I think I might just take Curse Scroll. This actually looks like it could be a decent Curse Scroll deck. You get down to a low hand size and you start scrolling them. And then here, I guess I will take Vindicate. I don't really think any of these are that playable. And oh, this actually is a Beaumont Courier deck reasonably well. All right, I'll take that over Sarah Paragon. And then I'll take a last pick, Restless Vents, I think. Okay. Going into the next pack, I don't mind Strict Proctor as a card I'm passing. Oh, I guess Third Path Iconoclast isn't a zero either if I end up seeing uh, some blue stuff here this pack. But unless I open something like Time Walker Ancestral, I'm not that likely to go into blue. It feels like blue and green were pretty cut. Red and white were fairly open. Black was also not that open. So it feels like red and white were mainly open, which... <laughs> It's kind of good for Sandy, but I, I do have some options. All right, well, the best card in the pack's Oko, which I'm very far from taking, but I'll have to consider. There's Force of Will, also a good card. Oh, Thoughtseize is also a great card. There's also Death Greeter's Champion. So it's three mana, two on, double strike, back up one. So you play this for three mana. It's a two on double strike, and it gives one of your creatures plus one, plus one, and double strike. So imagine I go turn two Revoker, Turn three, I go Death Greeter Champion, attack for six, and then I end up with a three, two, and a two on double strike. But also it has dash, so you can play this with haste, which means you get the backup ability multiple times. It's pretty sick, actually. I think I'm just going to take Death Greeter Champion, almost assuredly Wheel Seething Song, and then pass Oko, Force of Will, Thought Season, just let everyone else have the goods. It, it doesn't really make sense to take Oko, and then Jesse just takes Thought Season because she's playing black anyway. So I'm going to slam Death Greeter's Champion. Yeah, oh, definitely followed up with a Chrome Mox. This is one of the more Chrome Moxiest decks I've ever seen. And Goblin Ravel Master and Crater Maker probably will both be here when they come back. Maybe someone took the Ravel Master, but I don't I don't mind. All right, we're we're playing uh the mono red deck from Legacy, the, the mono red stompy. We just need Ancient Tomb, it would be the nuts in this deck. Okay, here we've got Oliphant and Arc Trail and Fire Covenant and Zeator's Proven Grounds as cards I'm considering. Notice no white cards. Sandy's definitely doing that. He took the comet and everything. I think I'm going to take Oliphant. Oliphant's a pretty good card if I get a Taiga to cycle for green. And then with things like Name Sticker Goblin or random like Lotus Petals, I could just cast it. Arc Trail, I think, is fairly replaceable. And a red green Tapland, I don't think, is as good as an Oliphant here. Now there's a Braid and Scalding Tarn and Reanimate. It's a pretty painful one to pass. I think I'm just going to take the Tarn. I mean, taking Reanimate over Persist would make Jesse's deck weaker, but if if we think that Jesse's playing Reanimator, they're both pretty good, and me losing out on a Tarn is pretty bad. I don't I don't think I need to take the Abrade. I feel like I'm doing going to be fine on on that sort of thing, and I want to be able to splash Minsk and Boo without too much issue. And there, there's a Gristle Brand. Oh, an Elvish Spirit Guide's actually kind of interesting. Help cast this Minsk and Boo, or help turn to uh, like a Reckless Stormseeker. I should probably just take Shatter Skull Smashing, though. A land that pitches to Fury that also you can just cast is pretty nice. And Elder Spirit Guide feels like not necessarily going to have trouble getting that. 
Here, there's Robber of the Rich and Bloodthirsty Adversary. I don't think I want Gruel Turf. I want my lands to come in untapped generally, though. I would probably play it if it wheeled. I just don't think I'm going to take it. I tried adding a couple of the Bounce Lands in. I didn't want a lot of them, but I think a couple can play well. I don't care about Metamorphose too much. I'll take Robber. Robber, I think, is just a good card. Now there's Char versus Mindstone. And I've got lots of twos, but I kind of feel like Mindstone would work in this deck. And Char is, I think, fairly replaceable. I actually, I actually like that pick. Now it's a really late subtlety. Dragon's Rage Channeler. I've got Mox, Mox, Flame Slash. I got a bunch of artifacts, creatures. Yeah, this looks like a decent Dragon's Rage deck. I think that that's good. And Seething Song Wield, I really do want that. Seething Song looks great in this deck. Late Exhum and Goryeo's Vengeance. All right, those are ones, those are twos, those are threes. Big Red. I love it. Splashing a Minsk and Boo off of like... A couple green sources, most likely. This this is cool. I, I like the way this is going. And uh, we did get to get Death Greeter Champion into Seething Song, which is maybe not the dream packs, but uh, if I can if I can pick up like a Mana Crypt in back three, woo, then we're talking. Even, even thinking smaller, I think picking up like a Lightning Bolt and an Ancient Tomb would go a long way for this deck. Wasteland and Strip Mine would also be good as Disruption. We'll see, uh, we'll see what comes back around, but I kind of like where this is heading. All right, here I'm going to take the Crater Maker because I will play that. And did indeed wheel. Arc Trail came back. I'm, I'm just off it. I'm passing a Torsten and a Frantic Search. I'm just passing everything. You know, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let the Reanimator stuff flow. Reanimator is a tough matchup too, so I don't I don't love that. But I just don't think like hating Torsten and then Frantic Search being the exact card Jesse was looking for doesn't sound great, especially when Matt could be playing one of or both of those cards. So... At that point, I just don't really see what the point is. Okay, here, I've got to take Sunbaked Canyon. I was looking at that Endurance, but I really can't pitch cast it and casting it. Like, for two green is going to be really hard. Manglehorn I will take, though. That's a, that's a sideboard card I can get behind. Same with Manamorphos. Man, maybe, maybe I should have taken the Endurance. It is a good sideboard card. All right, going into pack three. Let's see what we got here. We got, uh, obviously, looking for an Accelerant of some kind. Mm. This is just one of the worst packs I've ever seen. All right, uh, I guess. Wow. Am I first pick hating Sandy's Mother of Runes? That seems bad. I guess I'll just take on Holy Heat. There's just no card I want, though. I mean, Metamorph is just not really what this deck's looking for. Gross. What a gross pack. All right. Oh, good. There's a there's a Tolarian Academy. Uh, I'm going to take Wasteland. Wasteland is exactly what this deck does want. There's a bunch of white cards in the pack. Can't do much about that. Boneheart Dracosaur is also something I'd be interested in, but Wasteland is a lot stronger. So I'm going to take that. Oh, and then I've got to take Taiga. Taiga makes Minsk and Boo basically free because it makes Scalding Tarn and Oliphant into green sources. Passing a Stoneforge Mystic, but the opposite direction that we saw Cauldra complete. So not too worried about that. <laughs> and then there's this pack that has Tinker and Feywild Caretaker. Well, I guess... Honestly, I'm considering taking this Feywild Caretaker. There's nothing in here for me. I don't really need a Mana Confluence that badly. I have Scalding Tarn, and I have Lotus Petal, and I could even play Metamorphose if I wanted. I feel like, it, especially if I... I wouldn't even dream of this if I hadn't picked up the Taiga, but with the Taiga, if I play one island, I'll have maybe three or four sources for that. There's also a Ketria Triumph. Well, that's not going to come back. Uh, Mana Confluence. Yeah, let's just take the Feywild Caretaker. We'll, we'll see if we end up playing it. Oh, Fiery Confluence is the stone cold here. This is just exactly what this deck wants because it's Disruption that also just kills them. So let's slam that over Council's Judgment, Baleful Strix, Generous Ent. Yeah. Oh, and there's a Steam Vents. Out of a pack that there's nothing I would want to take anyway. And, uh, and two good white cards. I can't even, I don't even want to think about hate, hate drafting Sandy. There's no reason to. All right. Well, this is kind of perfect. This is actually looking like a good big red deck. Right now, we're actually a, a shorter playable or two that we can get that easily because we have right now 15 land plus Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Scatter, Shatter Skull, Smashing Oliphant. So it's kind of like 19 land. Oh, there's the Dreadnought. <laughs> wow, super late Lurus too. Grim Monolith is probably decent for me, right? It can help cast Caretaker, Inferno Titan, Fury, even Minsk and Boo a little bit. It's that or Gemstone Caverns. I think I'll take Grim Monolith. I, I'm, I'm a short a couple. And I also already have the Chrome Mox. I guess having both isn't that bad. 
into burst lightning. Wow, that's a late mind twist. I just don't think Sandy's in a huge position to play that, so I'll just take the burst lightning. That was pick eight, so we're basically done. So now we're at 13 lands plus those. So now we're at like 17 lands. That I could play one more. I also do have these mind, this mind stone. I guess I'll take the metamorph now and maybe I'll sideboard it. I don't want tribal flames in this deck. I'll pass the blight still to go with Tinker. If Sandy is doing something different, that would be interesting. But pack two, after pack one having a lot of white and pack two having none, I don't, and I pass Sandy Comet. It's like one of his favorite cards in the entire cube. I don't really think that's what uh, what's going to be happening here. Okay, Bonehorn Dracosaur, Dracosaur Wield, and I'm definitely playing it. Red and six isn't like crazy far away from being good, but I don't think I want to play it here. Mindstone is a card I'm considering cutting. Um, I don't know. I need to cut a couple cards because I picked up Burst Lightning and Dracosaur. All right, I'll take, I'll take Wandering Emperor. I think that one's a little bit better than Touch the Spirit Room. And I like all these. I'll just hate Student of Warfare. I'm not playing the Elf. I do like Red Green Elvish Mystic into, you know, like Reckless Stormseeker type strategies. The Gruel Beat strategy is actually really good. It's like J Bro's like favorite deck, but I don't think that's where we're at. We're basically mono red with one blue card and one green, one blue, uh, green card. I guess I'll take Iteration. There's like a chance I would want one of those. I don't know. Manglehorn also a good sideboard card. All right, I'll take Talisman. I don't think I've ever seen Sandy put Dark Depths in a deck. It's a marginal card to begin with, but it doesn't seem to be his jam. All right, let's go to deck building. This this is a nice little welcome back to, to the cube. I've taken a day or two at a, at a family trip, but now, now we're back, and uh, this, is, this is a good one. All righty. This is what I'm looking at. 14 lands plus Oliphant, Shatter Skull, Smashing, and Chrome Mox. That's 17. Petal's kind of like an 18th mana source, but I also have Wasteland and, of course, Oliphant and Smashing both... Do the thing. I also don't think I need any islands or forests. Just straight up steam vents, taiga with the tar torn and oliphant to get them. Plus, Manamorphos is sick with Seething Song or Name Sticker Goblin. You cast one of those, then you Manamorphos into Minsk and Boo or Feywild Caretaker. Definitely getting the Dracosaur and the Inferno Titan in, Grim Monolith, all that. Cutting Goblin, Crater Maker, Mindstone, and Metamorph, though I think I will side those in fairly frequently, though maybe. Actually, I'm going to cut the Revoker for the Metamorph. Fiery Confluence does a lot of what Revoker does. And my teammate has multiple green decks where Revoker, I think, tends to be pretty good. And Metamorph with Death Greeter Champion, Fury, Titan, that's all pretty good. All right, that looks pretty sick to me. My teammate's decks are great, too. I'm actually pretty stoked. So start, start with the best. Matt Troll Aesthetic is a... On Mox Ruby, Time Walk, Mana Drain, Snapcaster, Tamio, Fast Bond. He got the Oko. Good mana, ponder. Oh yeah, this deck is just fantastic. Time warp, green suns, all that. Max deck is uh, you know, a little bit tribal or a little bit domain rather with tribal flames. He does love the domain decks. Bombardiers is great. Tribal flames, good. Ancestral Reek, although we did have to pack some Ox Pearl. Fourth year Lingus plus pest infestation. Sandy did in fact take the comet. And Jesse took all the black spells. So we got two two matchups already there. Metamorph also good against Reanimator, and then uh, Salvato on one of the one of the most you know restrained Salvato decks I've ever seen. He's not a five color combo deck. It's red black through the breach deck with a, a bunch of Eldrazi's and Animate Dead, Demonic Tutor, Shallow Grave. Looking pretty good. I like our decks. Uh, let's get to round one. All right, time for round one. Let's see what we've got here. Turn three, Minsk and Boo. This Lotus Petal already paying off. If we drew a Chrome Mox, we could we could turn to it. Wow, this is like the, the most City of Traders Ancient Tomb deck I've ever seen, but sadly did not pick one of those up. But that is all right, because we've got on the play a turn three Minsk and Boo with Fury and Fiery Confluence, which is nice because, well, Dan drafts two decks typically. Obviously, he drafts more than that, but like the two decks Dan is most likely to be playing are some kind of five color combo deck. Or, or like the last time I played where he just killed me turn two twice, I got to give him credit. Or red, white aggro and uh, fury and fiery confluence. Pretty good, at least the second one of those. All right, here we go. Let's go steam vents tapped. And I don't think I play the lotus petal until I know what I'm up against. In the dark, I think you should keep moxes or petals that you're not going to use in your hand. Uh, there are fewer hand disruption spells than 
ways to kill them. And especially in this hand, there's no, the only hand disruption spell that really gets me is Inquisition. All right, Dan is playing blue. I mean, he obviously could be playing blue control. It's just not quite as often. Oh, Grim Monolith's interesting. It, it doesn't actually help the Minsk and Boo get cast anytime sooner, but it does mean I can hard cast Fury after that. Oh man, am I gonna jam into double blue? Oh, okay. Let's see what this is. Because this, if he is probably playing something here, yeah. Sahili, okay. Into Urza's Bobble, okay. Into Mox Opal, well, it might be playing a Fiery Confluence this turn, we'll see. No play past that, interesting. What do I do? Okay, he's gonna Bobble, sure. He sees Fury. <laughs> well, he knows about that. I might still Minsk and Boo first, though. I think I do. Who's got a counterspell? He's got a counterspell. And uh, I don't think it really helps to play Fury or Fiery Confluence. It doesn't really kill Sahili, so I would much rather have Minsk and Boo go off here. Oh, no. Tishana's Tidebinder. Oh. Okay. So that stops Fury. Well, at least I have Fury here. It would be a lot worse if I didn't, because now I can do this. Tishana's Tidebinder is pretty good there, though. Okay, so those all die, and then Minsk and Boo gets its abilities back, and then I plus one it with no target. All right. It was a good Tidebinder, because this... It, it had traded effectively for my Fury plus Fiery Confluence, and it's a shame that Fiery Confluence was the card I had to pitch, but I haven't actually drawn a red card since. I need... Dan to not have a good play this turn in order for our Minsk and Boo to really keep keep popping. Though next turn, if I draw any of my expensive cards, I mean, if you look at my deck, I've got Dracosaur, Caretaker, Inferno Titan. Unfortunately, Fury and Confluence both gone, but also most of the threes would be pretty solid too. And so we'll, we'll have to see. He's got two cards left in hand. Main phasing a Hole Breacher? That's odd. Why are we doing that? Oh, we're gonna make. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, you didn't. That was not a good play, Dan. It, I think he wants to Sahili one of his things to attack the Minskin Boo, but that that doesn't work. They're all summoning six, so instead he's gonna use it to to bobble. But that doesn't really. Oh, oh, I, I guess it's so his Mox Opal's off and he has a mana up still, but that doesn't really make that much sense either. You could just cast it later. What if I wanted to use Minskin Boo's Minus or something? Who knows, right? All right, well, let's use this. That's a good draw. Uh, let's put three counters on this. And let's go ahead and attack Sahili. Minus twoing Sahili to draw in the face of Minskin Boo is, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of weird. I guess I'll just do it like this. Though I, I don't actually, maybe I should have, just pl waited to play the land because it doesn't. Now Dan knows the last card in hand. Eh, whatever. All right, pass the turn. Make a token. <clears throat> Still could definitely lose to a draw seven here, but I think I gave myself the best shot. And he only had one card in hand after all, after before all the bobbles went off. So it's not like he had, was necessarily setting up a whole breacher plan. He's got to have a draw seven this turn, or this game is in pretty good shape. Uh, Displacer kitten. Oh, that's definitely not going to do it. Okay, draw. Mm -hmm. I will not create Minsk and Boo token. Uh, let's go. Let's just go to the forge. Put two counters on, I think, Boo. Draw. Manamorphose. Well, I don't really want to use that right now. Let's see. If I attack... All right, I had to check it out just to make sure. If I minus two Minsk and Boo to kill Hole Breacher, I don't. I would not draw because it would still be in play. So I don't want to do that very much. I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to attack here, leave the the fairy token back, and then if Dan takes it, which is what I think is probably going to do, I'm going to minus two. I'm going to sack Feywild Caretaker, and I'm going to deal three to that. And then I'm going to cast Manamorphose to get green. Oh, and then I get to Shatter Skull Smashing. Perfect. All right. I just wanted to make sure I didn't, 
I didn't leave either of these two extremely dangerous permanents in play because now Dan's still dead next turn to the initiative. Yeah, he's going to crack Fiery Islet. It's not going to matter. Or at least it's really unlikely for that to work out. Best he could do is like a time twister. All right, now I just got to make sure that... Uh, I just didn't want to lose to a random draw seven off the top or a Teferi Displacer Kitten off the top. So I'll give up a lot of value. That was a good Tishana's Tidebinder. I will say that. But Minsk and Boo still eventually ruled the day here. Since I don't really see too easy of a way for Dan to end up coming back here. If he can kill Minsk and Boo and... Well, he can, if he can kill the Planeswalker and the creature, still in a lot of trouble. And that's a pretty tall ask. All right, well, Tishana's Tidebinder, huh? Um, Crater Maker looks pretty good. There's also Curse Scroll Revoker. Revoker doesn't... Re I guess it's good against all the random artifacts. I like all the removal spells, given that he's played a bunch of high-value creatures. Um, what do I want to cut? I could cut a Beaumont Courier. It looks kind of bad against all the 1-1s and flash cards like Tishana's Tidebinder or Hole Breacher. And maybe I just play Revoker and... No, I definitely want Crater Maker. I could also take out, like, Dragon's Rage Channeler or Figure of Destiny. I could take out Mana Morphos. I do like it, but it's so bad against Hull Breacher. Let's just do that, then. All right, we are on the draw here in Game 2. And uh, luckily had the Fury to not get completely demolished by the Tidebinder. It was really good, though, still. Uh, yeah, I think this is... This is going to be a solid hand. I don't have a green source for the Minsk and Boo yet, but I do have a Fury. I have a Grim Monolith, so I can accelerate out that Fury. And I have Bone Crusher against Hole Breacher and Tishana's Tidebinder. So Dan did Mulligan here. And we're, we're just looking for, I don't really know, I guess a Lotus Petal or like a Scalding Tarn to cast Minsk and Boo. But I wouldn't mind a one or two mana play here. I guess I have Grim on for two. So, yeah, this is looking like a pretty good hand. It's honestly with this matchup where he's got like Hole Breacher and Tidebinder and Displacer Kitten and Sahili and Mox Opal and Bobbles like and Black Lotus, of course, my draw is going to be less important than Dan's draw in determining how the game goes. I think my deck is going to be quite consistent. It's going to play a, a mid-range threat on turns three or four a lot of the time. It's got to have a little bit of burn, you know, maybe like a Fury, Fiery, Confluence, Bone Crusher, that sort of thing. And it's not going to do much more or less than that. Whereas Dan's deck has a really wide range where he could start the game with Lotus, Sahili, Mox Opal, Mishra's Bobble sort of thing. Or he could have a much weaker draw and I could Bone Crusher Fury him into Oblivion. So I guess I'm hoping for the second there. All right, Dan Mulligan once, and I do Fiery Confluence. That's pretty nice. That's actually one of the better cards against uh, his deck from what I've seen. It just blow, mostly blowing up a bunch of artifacts, though it can also kill creatures, which is nice. And let's go Mountain. Let's play Grim Monolith. Ship the turn. And next turn, obviously if I draw green mana, Minsk and Boo's the priority, but we'll see what gets played here. This looks like a Sahili to me, yeah. And probably into zeros. Ugh, that's not the one I was hoping for. All right. Well, here's what I'm actually hoping is that Dan uses the minus two on Servo. So then to make the Lotus big, and then I get to do something there. Uh... <laughs> I could blow up Black Lotus. I kind of want to. I could also cast Fury. Maybe I'll just do that. I'll cast Fury. And I can do... Oh, is he going to Tishana's Tidebinder my Fury? That's fine. I'm actually like totally fine with that because it kills the Lotus instead. My my plan with Fury right now is deal 1 to the Servo, 3 to Sahili. So if he wants to minus 2 Sahili, it goes away. And set up an attacker for Sahili. So 1 and 3. Um, and then... If he wants to sack Lotus to Tidebinder it, which is, looks like what he's doing, that doesn't really bother me. Next turn, I've got Fiery Confluence to deal two to each creature and then attack Sahili with now a Double Striker again. And it feels like that was advantage me still because I cast Fury. He used Lotus. I used Monolith. That's definitely better for me. Lotus no, is no longer copyable by Sahili, and 
<clears throat> the tide binder in play is kind of trading for the fury, but it's not really going to work out that way. Um, oh, <laughs> Lotus Petal for Minsk and Boo. I think I'm going to go Fiery Confluence, because let's see, if I go Minsk and Boo, I still don't really have a clean a Sahili attack. I guess I'll play the Petal in case he's got like a Daze or something. And here I'm going to deal two damage to each opponent and two damage to each creature. And if it resolves, then I get to attack Sahili. If he's got counter magic, he's got counter magic. I haven't seen tons of it. All right, there's there's that. And I guess I'll pass here. Next turn, I can cast Minsk and Boo and Bone Crusher Giant. So that feels like a pretty good plan. It actually is really nice to have cast Confluence this turn, even though I obviously wish it resolved, because I can cast two spells next turn. If I cast Minsk and Boo this turn, that would not be an option. All right, I'll just play the Mountain. Minsk and Boo. See what's up here. You could maybe have like a Force of Will or something like that. Could obviously have another counter, but if you had a counter spell, you wouldn't really be tanking too much. Okay. Dress down. Okay. Um, sure. Guess that's fine. So now this can't put a counter on on that. Yeah, that's that's cute. Um, let's stomp the Tide Binder here, so I can attack with my Fury. And attack Sahili. I don't really think I need to attack. You can triple block with Servos, I guess. And then I'll just plus the Minsk and Boo. And. Uh, have it target nothing. I guess that's fine. So let's just do that. Pass the turn. I guess maybe the boo should have attacked. Yeah. But then then I guess the servos would have gotten to attack the Minsk and Boo back. All right. Dress Down's cool. Dress Down's been really good. Um, obviously, at some point, Dan's going to need to play something that progresses his plan. He's kind of reacting right now. And reacting, I mean, the Force Negation trade was good, but like, the Tide Binder and the Dress Down exchanges, like I still have Fury and Minsk and Boo in play. Those didn't really negate the effect of those completely. So it's going to need something a little bit more. Yeah, there's a Mox Opal. If he casts a Draw 7, I guess... Uh, there's that Caves of Chaos Adventure. Okay. I don't think that's going to work out great for him. It's probably going to be the, the only play he's got to make, but... Oh, I guess I'm really glad. Oh, well, it's gonna let him kill the uh, the Minsk and Boo actually. So maybe that will work out for him. Killing Minsk and Boo with Sahili is pretty strong. And he even gets to attack with. I guess he doesn't even have to attack with the Servo, and he gets to exile the top card. Though I don't think he's very likely to hit something he can play. Hit a volcanic, yeah. I just played the land. <laughs> I guess playing the land first didn't work out. All right, well though that was actually pretty good. I need to draw something now, because. Right now, I don't really have an answer to the Caves of Chaos Adventurer. And that's a really good answer. Wow. Um, I don't actually think I'm going to attack here. I want to keep my blockers back. Okay. Feywild Caretaker. Let's just get a mountain, because it's my only choice. Pass the turn. I have the initiative, so I get a 1-1. One, one. Fury is very good at stopping Caves of Chaos Adventure, so that's my plan. And there's obviously stuff he could have here that would be pretty bad for me, but yeah, Caves of Chaos Adventure, being able to use Sahili to kill Minsk and Boo definitely made that play work out pretty well. Next turn, I'm going to get to, well, if I have the initiative, do some things. And if I don't, then we'll have to see. Okay, so Sahili is now down to one, but he's got two Caves of Chaos Adventures, and he gets to flip the top two cards if he attacks. But if he attacks with the original one, I get to block with Fury. So he's got to have an answer to Fury, or this becomes a little bit less appealing, especially since this can take back the initiative pretty nicely. So let's see what this is. I mean, Cryptic Command would be pretty good, I guess. He could attack me for 12, but then I get to attack back for a million, so maybe that's not bad. And as he's not in this phase of the initiative where 
hitting, getting one off that would be great. Well, he's already kind of committed by making Caves of Chaos Adventure into us, or making Token into the Caves of Chaos Adventure. So if he's whatever he's got, he's got to have now. His Dan's deck looks pretty good. All the cards he's played are great. And he has Black Lotus, which is also a great card. <laughs> I'm over here with my Lotus Petal, grinding it out. <laughs> All right. Displacer Kitten, sure. And we're triggering it. I guess Flickering... Oh, Flickering Sahili, maybe? Or Flickering Adventure to take back initiative? Mm, okay. So he's going to Flicker the Caves of Chaos Adventure, so he gets the initiative. Uh, what are you doing with this initiative? Forge, maybe? Okay. I mean, I guess I'll just take it. He doesn't have any flyers. So, you know, I kind of want to kill Sahili, too. Exile the top card, hits island. Yeah, I'll just take it. You get the initiative, that's fine. I don't have a way to really stop that. I could double block, but that doesn't sound like a good play at all. Oh man, if he's got another play, that'd be tough. Oh, this has to be great. Okay. Uh, I have enough mana to dash both too. Interesting. So this gives, so I guess, I guess this attacking isn't necessarily great. I kind of want to kill Sahili, but I really have to take the initiative maybe maybe let's see if i if i dash this no i don't really see like i think i'm gonna have to take the initiative with my fairy dragon token i don't really see killing sahili here is there any other what if what happens if i attack with fury it just gets chumped by a servo that doesn't sound very good to me and the servo even gets sacked. So the question is, do I dash the Death Greeters Champion or sack Sunbake Canyon? Kind of wanted to sack Sunbake Canyon. Well, let me just actually, hold on, I have a better play. I'm gonna attack with the Fairy Dragon, just attack Dan. Oh wait, that still doesn't work. He just makes a Thopter. Ugh, no, that's not really. I was gonna to try to take the initiative and draw a card, but I don't really have a ground attack either. So I guess I just needed to do this first. Mm, that doesn't change much. Okay, well, they're going to trade off. He's got the initiative. I'm at 13. So I think what I'm going to do here is just play my two creatures. Play Bone Crusher. I'm going to need a Fiery Confluence. That already got exiled. I'm going to need a way to stop that Thopter Foundry, or I'm just not going to be able to get in there. So now he can make me lose some life. It really depends on whether how, whether, how many spells he has. Yeah, I guess I should have sacked that first, but it really wasn't going to be easy to get in. Hitting a land off the attack was actually pretty bad for me. Oh, and he's got Gaia's Cradle. Wow. Yeah, his deck is sick. He's doing some pretty big things. I need... I don't even know what I need. I don't have a lot here. Inferno Titan, something like that would be sick. Okay. Makes a token. Untaps it. Has a bunch of mana. On my next turn, I'm not even sure what I'm hoping for here. I guess Inferno Titan is pretty high on the list. Uh, that's not anything. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to beat Retrofitter. Is there any way to get through here? I guess there really isn't. I guess he's got one card. I guess I can dash this and hope that the Robber of the Rich hits something really juicy. That's going to be my best plan here. I need a Trampler is the problem. I have Minsk and Boo, and that's not the Trampler I'm looking for. I'm going to keep loading the counters on Minsk and Boo because I still think that's actually better. And then I'm going to attack with Robber of the Rich, and I guess that's it. Let's see what we get. Wheel of Fortune. No, I don't think that's going to do it. All right. I am pretty dead here, not getting by all those things. All right. That was a beating. All right. Yeah. I thought I was doing well there, but he went pretty big. I wonder if I want Curse Scroll. Curse Scroll actually seems like it would have been good in both those games. Robber on the play still seems fine. Revoker still seems okay. I do like Metamorph. Dragon's Rage Chandler also seems pretty good. Figure of Destiny. I just, I'm, I'm leery of ground creatures in this matchup. It's kind of the thing. All right. 
I think I'm ready to battle here. I'm on the play. Let's just um, maybe skip out on the Black Lotus for, for a game here. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of actual lands in it, but I have Scalding Tarn and Olaf into Olafont, and I have Shatter Skull Smashing. So I think what I'm going to do here, and also Fiery Confluence is really good against him. Force of Negation, too. Oof. I think I'm going to... Go Scalding Tarn, Crack, get Taiga, cycle Oliphant for Steam Vents, and then hope to hit like a two drop to play. I could also slam Death Greeter's Champion at some point, but let's just play the Tarn here first. Okay. Let's crack this, get Taiga, cycle Oliphant, get Steam Vents, draw. Reckless Stormseeker, all right. So let's play this Shatter Skull. I'm just gonna play Shatter Skull tapped as a land because I'm gonna play it next turn, most likely, and I don't really wanna pay the life. And even if I even if I drew another land, I would still eventually end up playing Shatter Skull Smashing as a land, I think, because my next couple lands would still be pretty good. So I'm happy enough to do that as Dan. Thinking about like dazing me or is, it's no way thinking about force of negation in the curse scroll. Unless his hand is like Whole Breacher and Tishana's Tidebinder, in which case Curse Scroll is actually pretty annoying. So I think I actually should have cited it in the last game. He just has in Displacer Kid. He's got a lot of pretty critical two toughness creatures. We didn't. We're here now. Let's see if uh I can get some good action going. I think casting Stormseeker into Death Greeter's Champion sounds pretty good to me. Can do a lot of damage with that, depending on what he plays. I could even cast the Death Greeters not dashed and uh, give it plus one with the Storm Seeker. I mean, I guess this next turn I hit for three, then I just cast the Death Greeters. The Storm Seeker hits for six, and this hits for six. So that that's a lot of damage. All right, looks like Dan's magical line just crashed. He was not, in fact, thinking about <laughs> Force of Willing a Curse Scroll. All right, let's see what he's got on turn two. No Lotus, no Mox. Okay, okay. Arc Trail's not bad. Let's definitely lead with Stormseeker here. Really would like this one to hit. It would be quite a shame if it did not, since this is uh, kind of the pressure I'm hoping. Force of Will. He's Force of Negation and Force of Will. All right, well, at least he Force of Will did. I guess I'm not too broken up about that. Next... I really don't want to play Death Greeter's Champion. Oh my god, Chromox is just like the worst draw. All right, well, I guess I just have to cast this. Don't really have another another plan. All right, 3-2 Double Striker. It's not the end of the world. I guess the one thing Chromox does kind of nicely is it lets me uh, get Curse Scroll going. Oh, Mystical Tutor for Preordain? Why not just Wheel of Fortune, I guess? I, I don't know. I mean, it depends what your hand is if you really need to hit something. But you're not even getting to an extra mana. Let's see what the... Two bottom? Okay. <laughs> sure. Of course. Uh, let's attack, I guess. Let's send. And let's go Chromox. Imprint Seething Song. And I'm going to Arc Trail you. And one to the to me, I guess. So the reason I'm doing it this way is I really don't want to get Whole Breacher Wield. And Mystical Tutor for Preordain is just the most suspicious play I've ever seen in my life. So now if he plays Whole Breacher, I can curse scroll him. I think that that's worth it. I don't think I'm going to sack Lotus Petal to do two end of turn. Well, actually, maybe I will. If I end of turn curse scroll, he goes to nine. And then I attack, well, I guess curse scrolling there. No, I'm not going to do that because it's still lethal either way. Oh, hmm. I'm just going to attack first with Death Greeter Champion. I feel like if, uh, I feel like if Dan has Tishana's Tidebinder playing Minskin Boo is pretty bad. If he doesn't block this, he just dies. So yeah, let's do this. And now I can't get... Curse scroll or uh, 
hole breacher out of nowhere at least. So now I play Minsk and Boo. If it gets force negation, then I'm fine with that too. There's nothing I could have done about that. And next turn, the Fiery Confluence is still a huge threat because he didn't really make progress on the Retrofitter. All he did was, uh, was break even. Next turn, I attack again. He can Retrofitter again. And then, yeah, there it goes. Force of Negation. All right. That's, again, fine. I'm obviously worried. Ugh, if it's Lotus Hole Breacher Wheel, it's going to be pretty disgusting. All right. What is this? Time Spiral or something? A Coveted Jewel. Um, This could go pretty wrong for him. I mean, it'll depend. I'm glad, I'm glad I made him pitch the Displacer Kitten, at least. Okay, what is this? Are we tinkering? Oh, Teferi Time Raveler. Uh, I see. Bounce that. I mean, that's not bad, because he can still retrofit or make a token. So I just need to draw a land. Because now... Oh, no, I, I didn't need to draw a land, because this costs four to dash. Yeah, I'm going to have to do this the... Maybe an unfortunate way here. Let's see. Is it 10? I could Fiery Confluence, kill Retrofitter, kill Coveted Jewel, kill Mox Opal. That'd be fine. I can dash this, but then he just chumps with the Retrofitter. I can cast Fiery Confluence. I can... I can cast retro or cast Death Reader and pass, and then he's already used Force Negation and Force of Will, and then go scroll you down to eight, untap. No, but then I'd have to use the Lotus Petal, and I wouldn't be able to Fiery Confluence. That doesn't actually sound very good. Let's just do the Fiery Confluence, I think. Let's destroy target artifact and deals with one damage to each creature. Kill this, kill this. And it does one to each creature, which Basically, all that does is it kills the token. I'd rather kill the token over the over the thing. Okay, yeah, you can make a servo. <laughs> That's fine. All right, and then I pass. And then next turn, I've got dashed uh, Death Greeter, and that threatens the 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 coveted jewel. Or sorry, the coveted jewel's gone. That threatens to deal some damage. And Teferi plus one. Okay, I can kill Teferi with Curse Scroll. I might do that on upkeep, though. I could just draw, I could always cast Death Greeter. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I, know, I kind of don't care that much about the Teferi. What if I cast this? I mean, I could just cast the, the Death Greeter's Champion and then scroll the Teferi. I could also cast Dragon Rage Channeler. And then and then cast Death Greeter's Champion with Dash, leaving the pedal. Let's see how that plays out. I'm going to put the counter on. Do I put the counter on the champ and attack for six, or do I put the counter on Dragon's Rage and then I attack to Fairy? I think I just put the counter on the Death Greeter Champion, and then attack Dan for six here. And this puts him at four against a Curse Scroll and. Uh, a Dragon's Rage Channeler. I think that's what I want to do. End of turn, Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Sure. And this puts him, he's at four. I mean, I guess I can't be Hole breacher now. I mean, Wheel is pretty scary. Sahili. Okay. Into Bobble. I mean, the Dragon's Rage Channeler threatens to attack for lethal. I, I have Sorcery, Land, and Creature. I can always have Artifact if I want with the Lotus Petal. Okay, this looks pretty close. Let's see what we got here. That doesn't change much. He can't have Time Walk, and he can't have Time Warp because my teammate has both of them. <laughs> uh, I think that this looks okay. He's got Fiery Islet up. That's it. Okay, I draw. Let's go. Let's start with casting Grim Monolith. Put this in the graveyard. Cast Name Sticker Goblin. Okay. I mean, I assume this is going to be fine. I got... 
five mana, that is not bad. Let's go stomp you. Uh, put in your graveyard, now this is a flyer. And I guess Bonehorde Dracosaur, no. Flame Slash the Caves of Chaos Adventure. I mean, Dragon's Rage Chandler is probably enough here, but I'm also I also want to give myself a decent chance to curse scroll. Oh, I guess I was supposed to play the Sunbake Canyon, um, and then cast Bone Crusher. It's gonna spin top, go to one. All right, Whew, we got this. We were outmatched. Like Lotus, both forces, Hole Breacher. He he kind of had all the cards, but uh, Big Red Rain Supreme, and we're one out on the board. One and zero. Oh. This is the start. Of the streak breaking, we're now going to go into our next round, really hoping to pick up another dub. All right, time for round two. Playing against Jessie. She, remember, she, we passed her all the reanimation spells. She is playing black, but she's also playing white. So, like, black-white mid-range. This hand's a little heavy, or mana heavy, but I will definitely keep... Oh, and green, too. <laughs> black-white green mid-range. Uh, ooh, well, it's not bad. I do have to. I do have to flame slash the birds, though. Playing a three-color mid-range deck, there's just no chance I could let birds of paradise survive. I'm, I like my matchup here a lot more than against just pure reanimator, because pure reanimator would beat the crap out of this deck. All right, what do we got. Don't love Thoughtseize. Makes my Minsk and Boo, <laughs> well, not worse, just disappear. But if I I get to go Wasteland into Beaumont Courier. And then I get to hope to draw a little bit of action. She's got Orcish Bowmasters in her deck. I really don't want to see that one next. Hopefully the Wasteland makes things a little tougher. Oh, Ancient Tomb, but we're tapping it into... <laughs> I don't mind a Neshova Brawler, but that's a really funny one. It does stop my Beaumont Courier. That's unfortunate. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to wait a turn on the Manamorphose. Getting the free trigger off the Dragon's Rage Channeler is just way too valuable. This tra Channeler is going to be a 3-3 next turn. Let's, let's hope it, I can get in there. Is this a Seasoned Dungeon here? Yeah. Uh, all right, well, Dragon's Rage Channeler is going to put in some work here. Also, Ancient Tomb has already done a lot of damage for me. So this is going to be a Swamp. So I don't love that. And uh, let's get a tapped steam vents here. Draw. Um, do I start with Manamorphose or Chrome Mox? So the reason I might start with Chrome Mox is it would give me a scry, but I guess I think I still start with Manamorphose. Fury to the top. Oh, wow. I mean, Fury sounds pretty good. But I don't have any red cards. No, I've got to put Fury on top. I think Fury is going to be too good. Let's go red, red. Unfortunately, no attacks. I'm just going to play the Taiga. Nope. Attack for three here. Put you to seven. Go get another mountain. And then pass the turn. And the Chrome Mox means that any spell or land I can cast Fury next turn. I kind of feel like my Dragon's Rage Channeler is not long for this world, but we'll see. Ooh. Oh, they should definitely have attacked last turn then. Because the Seasoned Engineer was, would have actually gotten this thing going. Unfortunately, Fury can't kill Dungeoneer anymore. If the... <laughs> well, if Jesse goes to Forge and puts the counters on there, but that's yeah, kind of the natural play. Okay, into Maelstrom Pulse, yeah. Draw. I really don't want to draw a land, right? That's that was the problem. Okay, so now I'm in a different state. Now I'm just gonna have to go Mox, Imprint Fury, attack with Beaumont Courier. I'm just sack this and draw two, and. Guess just play Reckless Stormseeker, pass the turn. <laughs> yeah, even if I had drawn a spell and gotten to play Fury, it wouldn't have killed the Seasoned Engineer, so that's not ideal. I'm at 11 now. I'm not dead this instant, but it's not looking good. Seasoned Engineer does some work. I needed, 
I needed like one more piece of action earlier. This is looking a little dicey. I guess, what am I hoping for here? I'm not close enough to, to threaten trap. Palace Jailer, uh, okay. I can't block, I go to five. And then, I mean, I guess if Jesse doesn't have a play this turn, that's something, but I don't think that's very likely. <laughs> Another initiative card, okay. Let's see, let's draw. Wow, that's close. It's close to being good enough, but not quite there. I can burst lightning and doesn't do anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Playing against Turbo Initiative. This does not make me want Curse Scroll or Frexian Revoker. I, again, I don't like Beaumont Curse, especially against Dragon, or uh, not Dragon's Rage, Orcish Bowmasters. I think I might just want Mindstone. I don't think Crater Maker is really doing it for me. There's also a third path Iconoclast to make a bunch of tokens. And then I put in like one more island maybe. I guess that also dies to, to pinging, but it feels like actually this could be good. Let's take out a mountain, put in an island, and let's run it. All right, I'm on the play here. Let's go. Huh? I mean, the if the Iconoclast is ever going to Iconoclast, then I guess this is going to be the game. I'm hoping I don't see it early Orcish Bowmasters, because I do have turn one, maybe Burst Lightning, a bird or something. Turn two, Iconic Class. Turn three, Mana Morphos, plus Wasteland, plus maybe another spell. Definitely could see doing that. Turn one, Mana Confluence. Okay, that's that's aggressive. Wow. Against like a mono red deck. Interesting. Um, I'm just going to slam Iconic Class. It's so much of more of a reward. Let's not get Bowmastered. Plus, I'd really rather Wasteland land number two than Mana Confluence. Oh, dear lord. A Mana Crypt, too? Okay, is this a Seasoned Dungeoneer? No. Underground Adventure is not quite as bad, but still don't love it. Mountain. All right, we got a lot of colors going on over there. Draw. I do like that. Give you another turn. Yeah, let's cast Manamorphose first. Let's add red, blue. Let's conceal our wasteland intentions and then cast Met Metamorph Copy Underbound Adventure. And then get a mountain and then pass the turn. Now we have the initiative. Let's lose some mana crypt flips. No, unfortunate. So next turn, I've got Unholy Heat that currently only has one card type, but that could scale up quickly. I've got a soldier token to chump under mountain adventure. The Iconoclast looking good already. And I have maybe a wasteland. I would like to draw another bit of action. I would probably have to go to the Lost Well, just because with Iconoclast in play, every spell I draw is like kind of got that little extra bit of value. So even if I see Oh, uh, we're tapping right away. Even if I see an opportunity for Forge and Trap to attack, I, I kind of feel like I want to... Lost Well, am I getting Winsed? I kind of feel like I'm getting Winsed to Abandon. Oh, way worse, Wrath. But I guess I'm the, I am the. I do have the initiative. Uh, maybe, maybe that's not worse, actually. Let's go to the Lost Well. Well, well, well. Bottom, set to bottom, Minsk and Boo, unfortunately. Oh, Death Greeter's Champion is nice. So let's go Wasteland, Unholy Heat, and then pass. Might as well try to put Jessie in a spot huh, where she can't cast anything, though she won the flip again. I don't love that. Giver of Runes, hopefully no play after that. Oh, maybe I should have kept Minsk and Boo on top because of Stash. I just really wanted to play something this turn. It was I was worried about getting hit. See a Taurus Proving Ground. Wow, that is nice. Nice little slow roll there. Uh, let's draw. I'm just going to cast this. Because I want to protect the initiative, but I kind of feel like I'm not going to. 
Yeah, I mean, Mana Crypt is pretty great when it doesn't have a drawback. It's pretty great even when it does have a drawback, but when it doesn't, then it's really great. Okay, Thalia doesn't immediately take the initiative back, which means I get to get a skeleton. Okay, okay. If I can draw a piece of action here, then I think we're in really good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't really call that action, but it's not nothing. Okay, <laughs> I hit, I roll, I high rolled, <laughs> didn't get there. All right, so now Thalia can eat my skeleton here. Oh, Mana Crypt does have a drawback. Interesting. No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this does mean, well, it means she gets to take the initiative, but if she wants to take the initiative, I get to take it back. Because I get to hit, you take the initiative, you go to forge or something. Then on my turn, I attack with both. So I get to go to the throne of the dead three, unless the last card in hand is another piece of interaction, which I really hope that's not the case. So we're going to scry. All right, all right. Let's go. Also, my best draw here, Fury's got to be it, right? Fury goes, toasts a bunch of those. He has two of the three, probably killing Thalia and Giver of Runes, leaving the Palace Jailer in play. And next turn, Palace Jailer gets to trade for Namesticker Goblin. That's it. Okay, you're drawing off Monarch. Oh, Bone Crusher Giant. Um... That's actually really interesting. I think I'm gonna start, well, let's go to attacks first. I actually wanna see something. Game log, both on bottom. I think I'm not gonna stomp the Palace Jailer because I could just stomp the Giver of Runes and that, and that is much stronger when it comes to initiative battles. It's really unlikely that Jesse found a way to keep the initiative here, I feel like. Okay, I get the Monarch and the Initiative. You love to see that. You love to see that. Now, now, we're, now we're cooking. Because now we get to, first of all, look at our top 10 and put something disgusting into play, hopefully. Though it would be so funny if uh, the last card was Containment Priest. <laughs> that would be really good. And... I have Bone Crusher if I need to. Okay. Throne of the Dead 3, what do we got? Bone Horde, Draxor, Inferno Titan, Oliphant. Uh, let's just go Inferno Titan and deal three like that. And then I become the Monarch. And then I don't even play or use the Bone Crusher Giant. I'll let these two trade. It's just pass. I don't really feel like there's a reason to play into another sweeper. Not that it's super likely that happens. All right, mana crit flips are now losing them, but it actually doesn't really matter since this fight was over the initiative and we won. All right, so on the draw, initiative battles. Mm, Revoker, Curse Scroll. Actually looks like Curse Scroll might be a little better here than it looked. Though, I don't really know what to cut. I don't want to cut any of the things that speed me up, I don't think. Robber of the Rich? No, I can't cut a haste creature. No, maybe the scroll isn't good. I like, because I like Dragon's Rage Channeler. I like all that stuff. Definitely like Metamorph, Death Greeter's Champion. Yeah, I mean, my deck actually seems pretty well set up for this. Obviously, they've, you know, got plenty of great cards, but I feel like... I feel like I like all the cards in my deck right now, and I have a lot of good sweepers, so yeah, I like where we're at. All right, on the draw, yeah, I actually like this hand quite a bit. I get to go turn two Iconoclast, play Petal, and get a token immediately, and then turn five Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan looks like the nuts in this matchup. Okay, no birds this time. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's a turn three Inferno Titan? <laughs> Gotta watch out for Wrath of God, I guess, but... Oh, getting owned by Thalia. All right, I guess that delays my plans a little bit. Um, Let's just pass here. I could play Iconoclast. That's close. No, I'll play Iconoclast. I'll, I'll wait on the Inferno Titan. I'll, I'll let the... This will slow Inferno Titan down a bit, but I think I want to let Jessie build her board a little bit. 
and then I also give up a ton of tokens, which look pretty good in this matchup. Okay, I hope this isn't Orcish Bowmasters, because that would be really annoying. Just very scared of that card. It just it's not even because I draw a bunch of cards, it's just such a good value card. It's part of why it's it's so good, obviously. No, dismember. Sure, that's fine. Uh, let's just pass. I, I probably will end up killing the Thalia here at some point, but I don't really think I need to do it right now. No plays. All right. Burst lightning it, I guess. Oh, Legolas is quick reflex. <laughs> sure. Oh, I guess I could have cycled, but let's see. <laughs> Sack this for a Taiga. Cast Manamorphose. Just get red, red. Draw. Cast Lotus Petal. And cycle Oliphant for Steam Vents and play it tapped. Legolas' Quick Reflexes is a pretty good card. My hand is pretty sick for this matchup now, so I just need to play one of these giant things. Hopefully this is... Oh. <laughs> Pick your poison, I guess. <laughs> you take Fury or Inferno Titan, they're both going to be pretty good here. Obviously, I don't really like seeing Thoughtseize, but... Okay, it's Fury, huh? Well, I can still cast Inferno Titan. I just have to sack my Lotus Petal, I guess. <laughs> God, that was such a bad draw. Uh, all right. Well, Inferno Titan it is. Boom and boom. A lot less of a good position now, though. I mean, obviously, start of the turn, I have a great position, but... Uh, I was really hoping to have a Fury back up in case this thing gets killed. If it doesn't get killed, I just win the game. So that's easy enough. But I kind of feel like it's probably going to. I don't know. Maybe not. All right. All right. Deal three to you. Do you have a way to block it? Or do you have Bowmasters? You have the Bowmasters now, sure. Let's go to eight. And then jump. Um, hmm. Do I want a fiery confluence? I'm not really worried about a wheel of fortune. I'm just gonna pass. I don't really think I need to to cast the confluence there. All right, pulse. Now I guess I probably will. Now, Pulse was a good draw. That was that was clearly the rip. All right. Any burn spell wins me the game. I think I'm just gonna deal deal six here. I now I'm a little worried about a hand disruption spell happening, and then now can't tap mana confluence anymore. Any burn spell, any haster does the trick. Ugh, I don't like seeing a land, but still a pretty awkward spot for for Jesse here. Let's see if I can avoid drawing more <laughs> Chrome Mox type cards. All right, well, let's play the Bonehorde Dracosaur. And see what's up. Inferno Titan didn't get killed the last time. No, don't go land Palace Jailer. That's all I want to see. Well, I guess I just don't want the Dracosaur to die. But my ideal scenario would be the Dracosaur lives, but they Jesse plays like a flying chump blocker. So I get to... A <laughs> Wrath taking damage off Mana Confluence. 2-0, streak officially broken. We've got a winning record. And let's check in on the team now that we are 2-0. and All right, we are 2-0. and <laughs> My team's actually down 3-5. to five, So I wouldn't have guessed that what my no-power big red deck being 2-0, and we would still be losing because I think I had the worst deck on my team. But we're here to game. Let's see if we can pull out the 3-0 and give our team the best shot of winning or tying. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm playing against Sandy on Boros, of course. And on the draw, I have Dragon's Rage Channeler into two one-mana removal with two other two drops and then one five drop. But I think on the draw, this hand has plenty of action. Especially, I would really like if Sandy didn't have a one drop here. Okay, he didn't. And I drew uh, an Inferno Titan, which isn't ideal. Oh my god, is Sandy going to mana tithe me? That would be such a beat. I think he's got that in his deck. All right. Hopefully this is just a dork. 
Oh, Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, that is actually fine. I think I'm going to upkeep Burst Lightning to try to... He didn't yeah, He didn't even get a, an artifact. That's even better. All right. Upkeep Burst Lightning. Land. Hit the land. Attack. Now, I could still upkeep Stomp here if uh, Sandy plays a two-toughness creature. Or maybe I just wait to draw my, for my turn. Hmm. Well, I can't stomp that in any case, so no upkeep stop. Eh, that's not the worst card in the world. Let's go attack. I'm not playing Robert the Rich here because I want to cast Stomp and Scry. Because I assume he's going to play something that will let me cast Stomp. It'd be kind of hard to for that not to be the case. And there's no point in killing it now. I'll let him crew. Because he's going to crew it, and he's going to attack me. I want I want him to, to loot. And I guess in response to the loot, maybe I'll, I'll cast this. Just I guess there's no reason to let him draw Ephemerate or Mana Tithe here. So let's go Stomp on Intrepid Adversary. Surveil 1, Mana Morphos. Oh, I'll put that on top. That's better than... It's, it's, a free, it's free real estate with the Dragon's Rage Channeler in play. Okay, Stomp happens. This is Sandy's turn four, so he hasn't played a land yet. <laughs> I discarded that culture complete. Nice. Land and... Gite. Okay. Start with Manamorphose. Surveil a land at the top, hopefully. Wasteland. Yeah, I guess I won't complain about Wasteland. Put on top, and then I'll add red, red, draw, Wasteland, cast Bone Crusher Giant. And send. It's a little annoying that he's got Copter and I can't kill it. I have all sorcery speed spells except for my one instant that dealt two damage. So I'm really hoping he can't do ooh, exactly this, which is play a two drop, crew, equip Gite. And it happens to be a two drop that is indestructible. What a scam. I'm getting scammerinoed here. I don't really have. I'm going to side in Goblin Crater Maker, but this is not looking good. I mean, if I draw like a Seething Song or something, I, I could be in there, but this is going to be tough. I need to draw Fiery Confluence is actually what I need to draw. You can kill Dragon's Rage now. I probably should because, yeah, what if I scry into something or surveil and flip it? Have it be good. Um, let's Flame Slash the Adanto Vanguard. Okay, pay for life. And... Land, Robber of the Rich, attack for six, I guess. Don't really have a better line here. And then next turn, I don't really know what I do here. I can equip the GTA attack with the Vanguard, get three more counters or go up to three counters on it. You can also play Comet if that's what he's got. I'm here hoping for... A blue land would let me cast Feywild Caretaker, but I don't know that that would even be that good. I guess Fiery Confluence is just the answer. If I draw Fiery Confluence, I can kill Umazawa's Gita, kill Smuggler's Copter, and then force the Vanguard to pay four more life to not die. Though I guess if the GTA is on it, that's not entirely true. Uh, that could be pretty good. I guess I'm at a point where a land lets me cast Fury or maybe Feywild Caretaker if it's Tarn or Steam Vents exactly, and a red spell... Let's me maybe cast that red spell plus pitch cast fury losing Inferno Titan. Lotus Petal also works to cast the Caretaker, and then Seething Song works to cast Inferno Titan, which Oh, are we doing Comet? Okay, I like that. Cause let's miss on Comet. Come on, Sandy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, he's going to deal five, kill the Bone Crusher, I guess. Unless he get, gets back the one drop. I, I don't know which one it is until it resolves. I mean, I guess I could look. No, it's Killing Bone Crusher. Okay, that's that's actually not the end of the world. Because he also doesn't get GTA counters here. I think he kind of got baited. I mean, he was winning by a lot, and, and a, a whiffed Comet flip is actually like kind of one of the ways he could end up in trouble here. Okay, so... Let's do this. Uh, 
I really want to draw a land or a castable spell. This was like the worst of all worlds, I guess. Because uh, if I could play Fury and go 3 1, that would have been something. Let's exile the Inferno Tank. I have to play this either way. Okay, let's do three one, and see what you do. It could be just crew the, the copter. I don't think Sandy's gonna pay four life here. Well, he, he could. He's got the GTA, so it's really he's like a. It's really like he's at nine, not seven, but paying four life uh, is still a little bit risky. It's possibly just crews the copter and doesn't keep the vanguard around. It's brutal to end up with my two. <laughs> Uncastable cards in my hand. I guess Bonehorn Dracosaur is like a third. That's fine. Oh, he did pay the life. I like it, Sandy. Aggressive. Calm it down. Pass the turn. Mm -hmm. You're at three. But that GT is about to keep getting counters. I think I am done for. Oh, uh, if I do a Fiery Confluence, I could still come back here. Confluence, killing Copter, and GTA is, is definitely something that could happen, but barring Fiery Confluence, like, I don't have another way to kill an artifact in my main deck, I don't think. I guess I have Metamorph to copy it. Okay, well. Yeah, you can equip. Mm, I guess I'm going to take it. I don't think... Throwing away Robert for one GT counter is a good idea. I assume I'm just taking three. It would be wild if Sandy wanted to hit me for five. All right. And now, if Sandy doesn't play anything and I draw one of my lands that can play something, that would be nice. All right. Oh, that is a start. Okay. Let's attack here first. I don't think I'm supposed to... To hold back, all right, because I'm going to deal one to everything with Fiery Confluence, which means that he can use one GTA counter to kill it. He might use two right here to kill it, which is effectively like doing two extra damage. It's pretty reasonable to kill it. I mean, do you want to go to one? Maybe he does. Okay, well, let's go one damage each creature, destroy target artifact, destroy target artifact. Boom, boom. I mean, it's actually, actually, I guess it's, it's kind of about the same. No, maybe it's better. I guess it's better to deal two damage to him because he can pump this, ping that once. But ping that once is like gaining. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, the three counters gain him some life and then kill the robber. So if I shot Sandy, it would be very close. Okay, so he's not killing the robber, then he's just doing that. Okay, that works for me. All right, we got ourselves a game now, because Sandy's on one card. He's on five. And five life, one card, now two. A lot of mana. He can cast anything in his deck. I can cast almost everything, and I just need to draw an off-color land to cast one of these or spells. Okay, mountain is a horrible draw. Let's attack here. I sadly just don't have <laughs> the ability to get these two cards out of my hand. What is this? March. All right, well, I'll Wasteland this in case he's got, like, double red cards. I'm going to feel pretty dumb if I draw Bone Bonehorn Dracosaur, but, you know, what are you going to do? And then I'm going to take another three down to five next turn. So if Sandy plays a card next turn and I, and I miss, I'm dead. If he misses and then I miss, I'm not in great shape. If he misses and I hit, I'm going to win. Hit as in draw Scalding Tarn or one of my lands, Lotus Petal. All right, he missed and I missed. Now next turn, I'm just dead if I miss. I mean, I might be dead now. I, I don't know. Well, he probably has removal. The good thing is if I draw uh, the land to cast one of these, these cards can take over the game. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right, so I want Crater Maker. Definitely want Curse Scroll. Don't like Beaumont Courier. Uh, I don't like Wasteland, I don't think. It just, I don't like it against those kinds of decks, so I guess I'll put in 
another island I think is I don't know they're both pretty good island or forest um, I kind of don't like robber of the rich in these matchups even on the play it's just not that effective you, you kind of got to plan for a longer game I actually wonder maybe I should play these what would I take out though I think that the the Dragon's Rage Chandler is still kind of nice. Same with the Storm Seeker. I guess I, I kind of like the 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 setup I've got. So maybe I just put in Crater Maker and Curse Scroll. All right, let's try that and go to the next game here. Is there something I want to cut for Third Path Iconoclast and Iteration? I mean, maybe maybe Figure of Destiny for Iconoclast and. Given the way these games are looking, and maybe I cut Reckless Storm Seeker. That's kind of nice against uh, against Comet. So maybe I maybe I leave it like this, and that sounds pretty good to me. All right, I'm on the draw. I'm on the play here. I'm hopefully on the draw in game three. <laughs> mm, oh, I will keep this hand. This hand is a turn three Bone Horde Dracosaur. I don't think I need to cycle Oliphant quite yet. So let's just lead on Curse Scroll. Because if I can get away with not cycling Oliphant, I would like that. As per Sentinel, oh, how annoying. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and give him a card. I don't really have a choice here. Red, blue, <laughs> into Monolith, and then pass. And then next turn I can Bonehorde Dracosaur and go get my uh, Taiga with Oliphant now that I've drawn Minsk and Boo. And hope that Sandy doesn't have an answer to the Dracosaur. I mean, it's playing on turn three sounds like a pretty good deal. Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, I actually think I can beat Cauldra Complete with this thing. Getting a 3-1 and a bunch of treasures every turn is probably enough. Oh, that's kind of annoying. If I had drawn that earlier, I could have had an even faster one of these. All right, let's just drop this. Pass the turn. We can cycle later. And... I could have played Lotus Petal this turn and paid for it with uh, the Esper Sentinel, but I don't think that's what I want to do. If he has March, uh, I was going to say, if he had March and, then now I'm dead. Now, now I'm going to lose. Because he, he can put in Cauldra Complete now. And, oh, he cited it out. Huh. That's, okay, that's pretty nice. So let's cycle Oliphant. Get Taiga. Draw. Um... Fortunately, I don't have the mana to do better, I don't think. I think I do play Minsk and Boo here. Mm -hmm. And then I have Curse Scroll up next turn, which will be pretty good. And and then hold on. Uh, I use Minsk and Boo's ability. I'll play Lotus Petal because I don't have to pay for it this turn. And I'll put three counters on this. And I think I just pass here. Because I, I want to punish Sandy for equipping Jite if he's if he's gonna do that. Obviously, if he has like removal plus equip Jite, it gets a little annoying. But I still get a Minsk and Boo out of the deal. Next turn, like he's not killing both. Winds of Abandon. Okay. I mean, this doesn't look like it kills the Minsk and Boo at least, like the the Planeswalker. And next turn, I could curse scroll and upkeep. I don't have a strong reason to do that, I don't think. All right. I would still like to draw Fiery Confluence or Goblin Crater Maker at this point, because we've got a, a GT battle on our on our hands here. But that is livable, let's see. Nope, never mind, I lose. Because uh, <laughs> now I'm going to put the counters on this. He's going to Umazo his GT in response. Nothing I can do about that. Yeah, and then now I'm going to pass the turn. And if he had two big exile effects in a row, that was really rough. So now he can't kill Minsk and Boo under the current set of circumstances because obviously he plays a haster or something that that changes things. But uh, if he tries to pump, I can kill it with Jita in response or with Curse Scroll in response. And... Council's Judgment. Oh my god. Uh, it's 
Curse Scroll, the Stone Forge Mystic. We're losing everything. He's got the third exile thing. All right, all right. You know, I came to the Sandy Dog's turf playing his game, and he took me out. There's a lesson to be learned there. I guess I should actually... Uh, yeah, he's going to vote for the Curse Scroll because he's going to kill the Minsk and Boo. Mm -hmm. I guess I should untap Grim Monolith. And what's my best draw here? Still probably Fiery Confluence. Destroy target artifact, destroy target artifact. Deal two to you, and then then we're like even except for the fact that he has three cards in hand and I'll have effectively none. Mm, okay. Confluence. No. That doesn't do anything. I'll just pass the turn. I'm basically drawing to Confluence or Goblin Crater Maker, and even then... Unlikely. Well, this is how you beat Big Red. You have three exile effects in a row against my Bonehorde Dracosaur, Minsk and Boo, and then Curse Scroll, and you just killed all my stuff and then had an Umazawa's Jitay to polish me off. But you know what? I'll take it. We went 2 1. We did our part. My team lost anyway, despite I think having incredible decks. But oh, yeah. And then there goes that Serra Paragon into Stoneforge, getting nothing. I believe. Or, no, or he got the Cauldron Complete. Oh, he just wanted the GT because he thought that Stoneforge was going to die. Right, 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 right. This would have been good at one point. It is not now. All right, that'll do it. Uh, I think this deck was pretty sweet. I, I think 2-1 is a pretty reasonable place to land, especially after playing, like, against, you know, Black Lotuses and Bowmasters and whatnot galore. Though I beat both those decks, lost to Sandy's just, like, Red white deck. Uh, the wasteland was nice. Having the mocks and the pedal and the monolith seething song. Look, if you can't open power, this is at least a way to do things. And then having fury, inferno titan, caretaker, Minsk and boo. I would have liked to untap with the Draxor at least once. Oh, name sticker goblin to accelerate them out. Yeah, this deck was sweet, and I, I like the addition of death breeder champion. So. Pretty happy with this overall and not unhappy with the record. Went two and one, did my part, even if ultimately my team couldn't cross the finish line. I got mine in. <laughs> well, you win as a team, you lose as a team, but I'm happy with how I did in this draft. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. I appreciate you watching as I draft Big Red for maybe the third time on the channel, something like that. I will be back with another draft, most likely not a Big Red deck, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.